Cullen. <laughs> uh, it's fun. I rearranged everything, and I kind of, I kind of like it. Well, okay, maybe not everything, but rearranged a lot, and it's, I get to look up <laughs> instead of look down, and it's kind of nice. You know. Do you stop long enough to listen? Do you wait when you begin to think about God? Do you try to emote or evoke a connection that you don't feel at the moment? Or do you just simply walk into the presence of God. You know, Jesus made a way that we could, each and every day, be aware of God's presence. It's not something has to be worked up, like in church or in putting on your favorite praise music. <laughs> that doesn't hurt, but that's not the only way. It's not something that has to be a gift of the Holy Spirit because what you're doing is you're just coming to God. <laughs> he's the creator. You don't think he's coming to you? When he comes to you, like in the cool of the day, what a connection it feels and sees and you experience because then your senses come alive. But every day, you can turn your attention and the priority of your life back to God just by having a devotional time. Having a talk, having a cup of coffee with your Savior. Jesus is there. He's just waiting to hear from you. And in hearing from God, no self-reproach. The eternal arms shelter you underneath are the everlasting arms. This promise is to those who rise above the earth life and seek to soar higher to the kingdom of heaven. You must not feel the burden of your failures or your failure. Go on in faith. The clouds will clear, the way will lighten, and the path become less stony with every step you take. So run that you may obtain a rigid doing of the simple duties and success will crown your efforts. If you have to start over, you start simple and keep going. I don't know anyone that's running a marathon that says, Oh, you know, I tripped and I fell down, now I need to start back at the beginning. If they trip and fall down, they get up and keep going. <laughs> I had no words of reproach for any I healed. The man was whole and free who had wrecked his physical being by sin, whose palsy I healed. The woman at the well was not overwhelmed by my, Thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. The woman taken in adultery was told, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. She was not told to bear the burden of the consciousness of her sin. Remember, now abideth these three, faith, hope, and charity. Faith is your attitude towards me. Charity, or love, is your attitude towards your fellow man, but as necessary is hope, which is confidence of yourself to succeed because I am with you. You know, there is a blaséness sometimes to what people think that the modern younger generation are doing that the same way that the older generation did in their way on other things. And that's to treat, say, sin of some type as though it were not a big deal. But you know, that takes time to recognize and to realize how much it affects the person that's sinning, how much it affects the nation that allows the person sinning, how much it affects the family, how much it affects the home, how much it affects the community, and how much it affects heaven and earth. Because in reality, 
if you want to see what sin is like, you can see how the entire nation of Israel, because of one man's sin, suffered. And you could look at David, or you could look at Jacob's wives when they hid the foreign idols. And any number of examples, we see that when we sin, we affect everyone around us. So, as soon as you do, the best thing you can do is to recognize that Jesus paid for the price of your sin. The consequences still affect everyone around you. But you can remove the curse of sin from you in the sense of this. The curse is that guiltiness that Satan can come to you and say, Ha ha, look what you did. And you can say, yeah, I did. Because you wear the truth around your waist as a belt. But at the same time, you could say, but you know what the truth is, is that yes, I did sin, but I asked God to forgive me. And in that moment that I asked God, not only was my sin washed away, but those around me were beginning to feel the ramifications of my sin, now feel the ramifications of my forgiveness. Because now I'm a tender person. Now I'm closer and renewed to God and I'm being restored to right relationships, so they feel attracted again to being connected with me. So while I may have remorse over what I may have failed, I'm not stuck in guilt over what I didn't do, because what I did do was seek the Lord. And that is how you go on with life. You're gonna sin, <laughs> you're gonna blow it. As a matter of fact, You'll probably blow it in as many big ways as you will in small ways. But in all ways, Jesus died for sin. He died for your sin. He died for my sin. So that we would have a relationship with God the Father where we could just come before our daddy and ask him to take care of our boo-boo. Whatever it may be. Do you need to go talk to your daddy today? Do you need to ask God for forgiveness in some way? <laughs> if you don't, yet, before the day is out, you will.